Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another part of my career mode tutorial slash walkthrough slash whatever. Look, we are now going to exploit our reusable launcher to launch a spacecraft for another purpose. We're going to build a spacecraft to start investigating the natural resources of the planet, or sorry, the moon, Minmus. So we need a spacecraft which will launch from our little cargo bay, fly around Minmus and carry a scanner. So I'm just building a very, very tiny probe here. We're, we're attaching a probe body, a little fuel tank, and you can see the delta V is like three and a half kilometers per second. So this tiny design gets a long, long way going to give it plenty of power because it's going to need that to transmit all the data back. It's going to have so much data it will be having to squeeze it down the pipe back to Kerbin. Now I'm building this in the vehicle assembly building like a rocket so I have radial symmetry by default and so that my decoupler I know whether it's pointing in the correct direction. Anyway the thing we want is the M700 sc uh, survey scanner. Look at it, rather rather beautiful. See it deploys like that and uses the whole parabolic segment to, I don't know, send data back and collect the results and focus them back on that little uh, transmitter assembly there. And now we need some power for it, so we're going to put on solar panels around the outside here. I think we can do four of them. There we go, four. And we'll use these ones. Uh, these ones are uh, without the coverings. Those can't fold away once unfolded, so those are uh, they're slightly lighter, and they're the preferred option if you are building a probe that's going to stay in space. But if you're having something that comes back, you want to have the ones with covers. Uh, might actually put on a couple of these flat ones just in case I completely forget to deploy these at some point in the launch process. I think that's us. I think that's everything we need. You've got to have a transmitter, power the satellite, and now what we're going to do is try... We've got enough Delta V here. Yeah, that's more than enough Delta V. We've got to figure out whether this is actually able to fit inside the cargo bay. So I'm going to take a cargo bay and... Okay, it doesn't attach, but that's actually pretty good because it shows us where it should be. There's a little bit of clearance issues there. So I'm going to use the offset tool here to rather to cheat a little. I'm just going to grab this tank and drag it down, and it doesn't complain. Grab this, drag it down, drag it down a little. Okay, well, that, that's fine. Look, we, we get a little bit of clearance now. We have our clearance, and I can just rotate it this way. It's still not attaching for some reason, but that's close enough. And we can see that these solar panels are clipping through. And so I need to adjust them, and I've picked up the wrong thing. Okay, Control Z to undo. Everybody keeps on asking, how do you undo? Control Z or Control Z if you live in, in other parts of the world. Okay, so I'm going to have to use the offset tool to grab this and try to slide them. Now, I guess it's only giving me, you know, things that motions at 45 degrees, so I just have to go with it. Drag it there. You, oh, no, I'm dragging the whole thing. There, that's right. Collect these. Yes, in you go. I think because I have snapping on, it's going to snap exactly, so I need to press C to disable snapping, and then I will get smooth motion so I can move these just a little inside. Obviously not so deeply embedded that they wouldn't actually work, because that would be unrealistic, but we do have enough clearance. Uh, these antenna could come in just a little. Now, the only thing is that I, that I can't fix is this giant antenna. It does actually clip into the inside, but I suspect that this will be fine. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna... there's nothing I can do about that. And the idea of launching one of these in one of these cargo bays is quite appealing to me. So, now finally, I want to turn this into a sub-assembly. The problem is the probe is the root part, and you can't include the root part in a sub-assembly. So I'm going to change the root, that's that little icon up there, and you click on two items. You click on a non-root item, and then you click on the root item, and then it magically reroutes everything. And I can hold Alt, click on this, and drag it to my sub-assembly and obviously throw that away. And now I actually have my you know, resource scanner satellite part that I can incorporate into other spacecraft. And so we shall. So I, I don't even need to save because I've saved it as a sub-assembly. Now it's a case of going to the space plane hangar and incorporating this marvel of technology into the payload bay of our single stage to orbit space plane. 
Of course, putting all this on a rocket would be super easy, but space planes are fun and you do have this reusable thing and in theory it is the cheapest way for you to launch your space hardware. So I'm just going to get rid of this, go to the sub-assemblies, grab my resource sat, and now we need to put it into the bay, except that I'm missing a decoupler. So I've got my decoupler here and I'm not sh I'm hoping that's the right way around. I always forget with the decouplers which way they should go. There, okay, sticks in there just fine. A snug fit, but that's science for you. It's almost like it was designed. Okay, so close this up and start the launch. Okay, so this is new me since this was recorded about a week ago. Since this has been released, or since this was recorded, Kerbal Space Program 1.03 and 1.04 have been released. They incorporate radiators and a rebalanced jet engines, which means the jet engines use a lot, a little more fuel. But I did know this was coming, and I did make sure that this space plane will still get to orbit. So I'm not going to show you the whole launch sequence, but trust me, you can fly this thing to orbit and it still flies well. So anyway, we'll complete our insertion and then it's back to old me. Okay, so now we have achieved orbit, we have a little bit of housekeeping to do. First, very important, you want to orient your spacecraft so that it can get solar power. Secondly, we want to inspect the satellite, because very frequently when you design spacecraft and put them inside space planes, in these cargo bays with docking adapters and things like that, it's not uncommon to find that the the satellite has been uh, depleted of fuel so i'm gonna go in and check it oh and sure enough yeah liquid fuel has been drained but not oxidizer um why would that be um oh yeah because jet engines drain fuel from all tanks so it's been draining fuel from that but that's fine we have excess fuel here we'll just transfer it in and that will make sure that our spacecraft has fuel when we when we actually launch it into space. You want to do this before you launch the satellite, because if you launch the satellite and it's got no fuel, you're basically stuck, right? It is now space junk. Thankfully, we figured that out, and we're ready to go and plan our, our trip to Minmus. Minmus is the place I'm going to, I'll make it clear, because I have a couple of contracts from Minmus, and Minmus has an exceptionally low gravity, so it's a really good place to mine fuel and refuel your spacecraft because it's on the edge of Kerbin's gravity well and has very low gravity and it's just a great place to start out space missions from if you're really into the mining of fuel in space. Anyway, there it is there on the far side, so we want to obviously plot an orbit which will bring us that way. Now, we're just going to time accelerate to bring ourselves around the planet until it starts to rise. And once we get closer, we will actually plot a course to this. Now, I'll also make it clear that we're going to do a combined uh, spacecraft boost followed by a satellite boost so that the satellite has enough fuel. We have. I'll show you what's happened, but the idea is that we're going to use our space plane to actually give it a little bit of a boost early on, just saving enough fuel for the return to Kerbin. Uh, okay, so set that as target. You know, we want to make sure that our satellite has the maximum amount of fuel possible. So this space plane has excess fuel, and we can exploit that. It looks, unfortunately, that the first opportunity is going to be way out of the plane of Minmus. So I'm going to have to make some corrections halfway out there. This is just a, a normal thing you have to deal with when going to Minmus, that you qu quite often have to perform a deflection maneuver to get to Minmus. If you're really paying attention, you should actually launch into an orbit which is inclined in the same way as Minmus. But obviously I haven't done that here, and most people don't in fact do that, since the deflection isn't hugely critical. I mean, it's it's not going to kill you if you get it wrong. There are cases where it will kill you, but in this case it won't. <laughs> it's not going to kill you, it's just going to strand you in space until your life support runs out. Technically it's the life support running out that kills you, right? Okay, so we're set up. Estimated burn, 42 seconds, but that is using the engines on the space plane, uh, just remember. Now, we want to make sure that we don't run out of liquid fuel, because that liquid fuel will be needed for returning. We also want to make sure we don't run out of oxidizer, but we need a much larger buffer of liquid fuel, because that will allow us to perform the 
uh, return to launch site, right? We might need to travel a fair distance across the surface of the planet. Okay, timing, time is running out. So we're going to burn until our liquid fuel is about, I don't know, 100 units. That should be enough. And then it'll be the satellite's turn. Anyway, let's go. Okay. So now we're going to watch our liquid fuel. We don't want that to run out. Otherwise, we will be stranded in space. Seriously, don't let it run out. Although there are still things you could do if you are stranded in space. It's technically possible to get outside with your RC, uh, EVA packs and use that to push your spacecraft back, but it can take a very long time, and it's not something you want to be doing anytime soon. And cut engines. 100 fuel units in the tank, time for the satellite to go, and this is against the clock because we are partway through a maneuver node. We want to rotate the mothership so that the, it, the cargo bay rotates away from it. Now this is going to transition, get its engines fired up, we are now clear of the bay, get ourselves aligned with our manoeuvre, which has now disappeared. Doesn't matter, I'm going to eyeball it the rest of the way. Throttle to 100%, we're just going to just make sure we deploy our solar panels here, get the spacecraft deployed and looking good. Looking like a real spacecraft, it can spread its wings in orbit will now be able to rank itself amongst the real spacecraft of the Kerbal Space Program. So yeah, I'm just eyeballing this until it gets out to about, you know, 47 or whatever. Uh, whatever distance Minmus is. I, I, I can never remember. I usually have to look it up. Looks like I'm going to have tons of fuel. I'm going to perform a little bit of a deflection here. Uh, again, this is something that will help a little. What this will do is raise my orbit uh, ahead of me. It'll It'll actually increase my inclination relative to Minmus for the initial part. But in theory, it will actually reduce my inclination change requirements. It's complicated. You don't need to worry about it. You just go straight. Go straight to Minmus. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not uh, pay any attention to the person behind the curtain. And cut. Okay, so that's us pretty close to Minmus's orbit. We've made a slight deflection. And now this is actually... So the point is that this is actually going upwards at this point in its trajectory, so it actually takes less fuel in theory. The trick is to combine your maneuvers, right? And we're actually getting an encounter with the moon there, but not with Minmus. Let's move it out. Um, down a little, maybe? No! Where is my encounter? Why can I not see any encounters? This is very confusing. Just make sure this is... This is targeted, right? 46 and 47. I'm just going to fire a little more here. Why can I not see this encounter with Minmus? This is a very confusing problem here. Uh, it's also sometimes very hard to make the make the maneuver nodes appear. Come on, bring it up. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. And no, it's not showing up. Oh, set as target isn't happening. It looked like it was set, but apparently it lost that status when it, when I uh, switched vessels. That's what happened. Okay, so, so I'm just increasing my altitude so I spend more time up there and Minmus gets a chance to catch up. And that's us. We have an encounter. Now we want to fine-tune the encounter to make sure that we can actually uh, get into a polar orbit. But Now we can deploy this, but we can't scan Kerbin from here because you need to be in a polar orbit. So... It's just going to look good as it scans Kerbin, but it doesn't get any useful data. Okay, 31 meters per second is what we need. We don't actually have an estimated burn time, but I think that I should be able to do that in about 6 seconds, because it looked like I was accelerating at about half a G, which is, you know, respectable enough. Most deep space probes don't have uh, accelerations nearly that high, although this is technically just not deep space, but it's pretty deep space. Okay, there we go. Look, three, two, one, and that's us. Now we have an encounter. Just make a little tweak to it. And that gets us over there. I don't know how close we are to an actual polar encounter, but we're going to need to tune that next. So what we do is we focus on this. Aha! Look, we're coming right over the poles here. Brilliant. So now I need to, of course, put a, a maneuver node on here and try to tweak it, bring it down. Now you want to be above a certain altitude and I, th I know that the minimum is 25 
So don't get too close, don't get too far away, but it has to be over the poles. Yeah, that's definitely too close there, I think. I'm just going to try to get it as straight as... Po oh, yeah, it's far too sensitive. Again, sensitive dependence to initial conditions. That's what orbits are. Okay, I think that's high enough. There is a table, if you look on the wiki, that will tell you how high an orbit you have to be in for the uh, scanner to actually work successfully. Once you get into a suitable orbit, the scanning will happen right away, and then you just have to transmit the data back. So I'm just pointing this directly at the thing and not using the maneuver node. I'm going to cancel the maneuver when I think I'm at a suitable altitude. And, oh, there. That's pretty good. Okay. Sweet! And now we shall begin our plans for arrival. So we need to, of course, perform an insertion burn here at the closest point to Minmus. We're actually moving very fast because of the trajectory I took. Mostly because I didn't spend forever optimizing things here. But 174 meters per second, I think we can spare that. Uh, I, I would be surprised if we end up using more than one kilometer per second of Delta V for this whole trip. After all, the spacecraft, the space plane helped us. You can see it near Kerbin right now as it's kind of zipping around in its highly eccentric orbit. We're going to have to bring that back and there will be a real trick, a real bit of, I don't know, finesse required to get that thing to re-enter as close to the space center as possible. But right now we are primarily concerned with this thing transitioning through the sphere of influence transition. Minimus encounter Ticking down, and come, 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 come on. Yes, now we go. I still want to slow down normally, but the game does that for me now. Yes, I still do a lot of things that uh, are unnecessary these days because Kerbal Space Program's uh, interface or whatever has changed. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the good news is that the laws of physics are pretty much the same as they were back, you know, billions of years ago when the universe was formed. So we're not going to be seeing much in the way of changes there. Anyway, we've got ourselves aligned, we're just going to do our insertion burn, it's going to be about 40 seconds, 174.6 meters per second, and we're just going to count down until we hit that 50% moment. 1 minute 10, 1 minute 50, 40, 30, and 20, go, 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 go! It overshot that just a touch, but as long as I end up in that nice polar orbit, we should be in a good position to start collecting that very, very important planetary information, which will tell us where the deposits of ore are. Now, ore is the substance which you can mine from planets, and you can convert it into all sorts of fuels. It is a very simple resource system. You don't have different resources for different fuel types. Uh, I mean, for example, if you were doing the Mars Direct plan, which is a, a plan to basically get spacecraft to and from Mars, most of the working mass for that actually comes from the planetary atmosphere. So you don't need to locate it on the surface. You just need to bring along some hydrogen. Whereas in Kerbal Space Program, you send up this satellite, put it into a polar orbit, and then you can start to do some science with it. There, look at it, beautifully silhouetted against the sun there. It's a rather nice little spacecraft, if I do say so myself. Anyway, right-click on this, uh, on the main transmitter dish, perform an orbital survey, and then you can see just how much uh, transmission, or how much power the whole thing uses. So there we go, 100% data, we've sent it all, and that's us, we've collected the data from this. We actually have a, t a bit of liquid fuel left. There's a reasonable chance I could send this to the moon, but... <laughs> There's a whole bunch of options here for the survey scanner. Unfortunately, they change what the map looks like and you can't see them while in the map mode, so you really have to bind them to action groups or something. But look, the natural resources of Minmus have now been laid bare for us to exploit and extract. And we'll do that in future episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.